Boris and Jess, what's your reaction? This is how the US transports its nuclear weapons. Why China half is interesting. Yeah, this is gonna be like very important question very soon. With all the shit is happening in the US, uh, people are gonna ask like, okay, let's figure shit out. Uh, there was a whole news about like US forgot how to make nuclear weapons because like all the like treaties, this and that, like nuclear weapon is a no-no. So, it, it, you know, stockpile is getting old and they have to replace it and now they have to think about it, right? Uh, it's, I think it's very media-like uh, headline, oh, US forgot, like, okay, forgot as a way, like how they used to do it back in the day, sure, because they stopped doing that. But it's not forgotten it, right? It's a modern world, it's the US. Yeah, they're gonna make nuclear weapons. If anything, whatever they make now is gonna be much more efficient and somehow uh, better, right? Old nuclear weapons are not that good when you really think about it. It's like it, it doesn't trigger uh, as reliably as you would think. It doesn't use its, uh, you know, like whole thing uh, that well, efficiency ratio of like the elements is not that good, right? That's why Zarbomba basically uh, supposedly to have like, what is it, like 100 megaton or something? It got 50 megaton. Uh, there's something like that. Same thing with the US weapon as well, Castle Brown and everything. They're supposed to have much. Uh, no, in Castle Bravo, I think they they underestimated, right? Like how much is going to be, and it was more, and it caused an issue. But yeah, it was always like they they can't really figure it out because the efficiency ratio nobody knows. In the modern one, pretty sure they'll they'll have, they have, they would pinpoint efficiency ratio because we have so many technology nowadays, right? Uh, we have like quantum computers and things like that. We have AI. We can calculate things a lot. So like the error will always go down. So yeah, the transport. I never thought about it. This uh, there, there was a uh, video of, like how somebody just forgot <laughs> uh, this nuclear weapons in some airport or something. Like okay, I guess that happens. But yeah, I'm, I always assume like from a place to place on a cargo plane. I didn't know there was like much preparation there. But it's gonna be interesting. Let's watch it. The United States has 5,244 nuclear weapons and a whole bunch of different ways to move them. Some can be fired from the ground. Retired, okay. Yeah, ICBMs are 800, SLBMs are 2,000. Bombers are non-strategic, okay. Others from submarines. Some can be dropped from planes and others are just collecting dust. But all of these systems for moving nuclear weapons are systems for deploying them. As in, that's how we move them from here in Montana to here where the bad people are. But what about when we need to transport nuclear weapons without blowing them up? Well, it turns out that moving a warhead from one part of the United States to another is like a whole thing. So you know the drill. We'll explain the thing and then we'll tell you to go buy something and then about 2% of you will buy it and then I'll give my writer Ben some money to go buy more croissants, which he needs to live. Here we go. Nuclear warheads in the United States live here. In the 450 or so missile silos in Montana, Wyoming, Colorado, Nebraska, and North Dakota, with a few spread out in other states. But throughout their lives, these warheads also sometimes need to be here, 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 or here. And at, and at this point, you probably have the same question that I did when I started writing this video. Why exactly are we moving nuclear warheads in the first place? It's not like we're using them. This must only happen like every few decades. And you'd be right if you just replaced every few decades with several times a week, which I guess means that you weren't very right at all. The US Department of Energy moves warheads all the time, and it is precisely because we aren't doing anything with them that they have to be moved so often. You see, the delicious plutonium center of every nuclear warhead has an expiration date, a point past which it won't detonate reliably, and the problem is, we don't really know when that expiration date is. So instead of rolling the dice on World War III, the Department of Energy has started the process of recycling and replacing the plutonium in each of these warheads, and that means bringing them from their silos to one of these locations for disassembly, reassembly, maintenance, or testing. But the question is, how do you get a warhead from here to here safely multiple times a week? Surely we don't just bring a nuclear bomb onto a public interstate highway and no, we do do that, don't we? Yes, in fact, here is a map of the interstates that the Department of Energy uses to transport their warheads. Yeah, it just makes sense because the uh, interstate system is like really good, right? It's based on like Autobahn system of Germany, which is already so good. And interstate system, it just works, right? It's like one of the few, if not the only one in the world that is like that. And uh, the, the, whole, the whole way, it's, it's very scientific the way they made it. You can even land a plane on that, right? You you won't see any billboards touching the internet sy you know system. Uh, if there's like interstate uh, road, if, the if there is a billboard, it would be very inside. 
rather than touching the road because you need that clearance area if you have to like i don't know like drop out you know like uh you know any any commercial planes a bomber or something because of war times or whatever that's what they thought of when they made this system and they made so way it's not like just any other road that's just gonna get damaged now you have to repair it it's made very well that you can like weather tanks and shit so it just makes sense like yeah transport through that's probably nothing's gonna happen but it's not quite that simple because bringing a nuclear bomb onto a public interstate highway requires a carefully coordinated operation that is almost entirely classified, except for the fact that this Department of Energy nuclear warhead transportation training video ended up on YouTube somehow, and now I can tell you exactly how it works. The warhead itself is first loaded into one of these. I know one of these, you might be saying, that's called a truck. But oh, dear simple viewer, you have once again been fooled by the US Department of Energy Office of Secure Transportation because that is no simple truck. That is a US safeguards transporter, and this grainy picture is actually one of the only verified photos of one in existence. While they're designed to look like a typical 18-wheeler with no recognizable markings and an ununiformed driver, they are anything but. The entire truck is bulletproof, with 12-inch steel doors, invulnerable tires, and can sit directly in the middle of a fuel fire for up to 60 minutes without the cargo taking any damage. The axles will explode if an attacker tries to tow it, and the entire trailer will fill itself with a rapidly expanding foam if the truck goes off axis. Are you kidding me? This is some James Bond little shit? I mean, it's a nuclear weapon. They better do that, but still it's surprising when you hear, you know, think about this. I've seen some videos of people just like pointing out like, oh, look at the military is transporting something. You see these Humvees and things. Uh, maybe like, you know, those emergency light cars going and then you see a big ass truck going, basically something like this. I didn't know it was that level of like, <laughs> I mean, yeah, it makes sense. Bulletproof and all that. Like, what do you mean by invulnerable tires? Is that made of like that NASA style thing, right? That was like airless tires that they made for the rovers and shit. I, I highly doubt it's that. Even though you can probably use that. I don't know why people don't use that. I don't think it's that one. It's also equipped with various ways to kill you, the details of which the Department of Energy still refuses to disclose, though independent journalists have found good evidence for at least two. It can electrocute you to death, and by reading through the DOE's contract with an Australian arms manufacturer from 2005, we're pretty sure that it has a robotic 40mm turret that is designed to quote, distribute large quantities of ammunition over a large area in an extremely short time frame. So no, it's not really a truck. A machine gun. A turret. <laughs> it's just, I, I like how they're like, oh no, we're Department of Defense, like, oh, we're not going to tell you anything. And like, journalists are just still trying to find out. And people are like, what are you doing, man? It's a nuclear transport. Why do you need to tell people what it does? But even with its fancy foams and turrets, this truck looking thing is only one part of moving the warhead. Every safeguards transporter moves as part of a convoy alongside two or three other unmarked and armored emergency response vehicles, one of which acts as the convoy's command center, an aerial support which can conduct surveillance, or like every other part of the convoy, kill you super dead. Each one of these vehicles is operated by armed OST agents, which is a federal agency you're probably not familiar with, but all you really need to know is that you probably shouldn't try to steal one of their cars. Every single one of these agents has Q clearance, the highest level of clearance that the Department of Energy can issue, and they also have the authority to directly enforce 28 federal laws, most of which allow them to, you guessed it, kill you. These agents can also, in the event of an emergency, create what's called a national security area, which essentially allows them to put any non-federal land in the United States under the control of the Department of Energy, regardless of who owns it. So these agents, empowered to kill you and steal your house, escort the safeguards transporter along a class- I mean, look, uh, um, in any other time, I'm like, oh, what, what, screw you, federal government and military, you can't do that, liberty, hashtag everything, I'm, I'm all for that. But in this instance, I mean, come on, it's a nuke. Of course they can do that. And it would make sense, right? It's, it's, it's good for you and your country, whatever they do, because you don't want this to be f a fuck up. And when it comes to nuclear fuck ups, there have been many, and we don't want to add to it. So I kind of, it, it all makes sense in the end, right? So, but yeah, there's always going to be like people, like, right? Like trying to fuck up with people thinking, oh, these are local cops. They will find out really well, like that's not the same thing. I guess they, they probably, these people probably know which place will, uh, will cause this kind of issue. I'm pretty sure they just want people, if they see someone approaching in advance, like, we are not some basic cops. This is not where you want to fuck up around. Just walk away.
ossified predetermined route, which is monitored at all times by the Emergency Control Center in Albuquerque. This center is responsible for contacting all of the local law enforcement departments along the route to give them a sort of vague message about a special mission that they're not allowed to know about and definitely shouldn't mess with. In the event that local police do encounter the convoy, tensions might be a little high given that both parties have guns and one of them has a nuclear bomb, so the emergency control center can give- Okay, so I've seen too many clips of like local cops asserting the authority that basically that <laughs> Eric Cartman shit, right? Oh, this is not the place they want to assert authority. Like, has there any been incident like that, right? I've seen people like trying to like oppress uh, FBI agents and uh, other federal agents. Like, oh, this is my county or something like that. Like, sure, I'm, I'm pretty sure there are like laws that can make a local cop arrest a federal agent. Why not? Even though it feels weird to me. But I guess it makes sense when you think about it, how America is. I'm pretty sure there's certain type of federal agents like, like this nobody should touch. And how, how are these cops going to differentiate between that? It should be a general thumb rule, like if it's a federal agent, like think about it, Co contact your captain or something. <laughs> Let's not fuck around. But some people just like, oh, so, you know, asserting the authority, yeah, they, they, they'll find out. Both parties would called a sign countersign, with the police state a code word and the OST agents respond with another code word. And all of these elements and procedures need to come together flawlessly in order to get the cargo from point A to point B, so it's a good thing that our nuclear warheads are in the hands of an agency that truly does not mess around. Unless you consider drinking on the job messing around, or threatening to kill each other messing around, or being severely understaffed and not having the money for weapons training anymore messing around. But they sure don't seem so, and I'm not in the business of disagreeing with people who, again, can legally kill me and take my ass. Anyway, it would seem that I have once again written a video that probably wouldn't have been possible if I were not using NordVPN. And it's yeah, you will uh, go to nordvpn.com for us half as interesting and support this channel. <laughs> yeah, this was an interesting thing. Like, uh, you know, uh, he just f focused on one specific element of like how transporting one place to like, uh, let's just say repair, nuclear repair shop. Uh, which I didn't see it coming, but yeah, it was much better than what I thought. This video was very good because I didn't, I really didn't thought about it. But now I'm like, hey, all that makes sense. All those clips and things make sense. But any other country doing this is problematic, isn't it? Because like I said, interstate system is very different. I guess Germany can do it, like, you know, because same thing, kind of autobahn. But in other countries, like in Russia, we've seen like how Russia is fine, you know, having problems when Ukraine attacked them. Because even they can't figure out which road is what, which uh, you know river blocks what, and strategically people can really dominate the place. America is one of the very few countries that was like uh, really thought about this, like how to control our own geography, where they create interstate system, thought about everything. What if somebody invades us? Like how are we gonna do this? How are we gonna transport troops? How are we gonna transport tanks and shit? So Autobahn is one thing, uh, interstate system is one thing. These are the only two countries I can think of who can actually like do military scale level things on their highways, right? Modern highways are getting better. There's many highways I can think of in my country who can basically uh, do this, but not all of them, right? <laughs> you really have to think about it. But in, but in the USA, you can basically go from any state to any state. Interstate system connects everything. It is like very awesome thing, right? This is why the drag racing and like straight line cars are such a big deal. Europeans always like, okay, why are American cars not good at like turning around, like cornering and things? Because interstate systems are usually straight. Why would you do that? It's just like 1,000 horsepower straight cars. There you go. What was that? Like Hellcat, right? 1,000 um, horsepower Hellcat or something. Challenger. Was it Char or Charger Hellcat? There you go. No, it's Challenger. I'm confusing with a Challenger Hellcat, yeah. All right, well, that was the how the US transfers nuclear weapon by channel half is interesting. If you like my channel, subscribe and I'll see you next time.